Mr. Popsit here. Thanks for checking out my channel. Make sure to check out Mr. Popsit Live and Mr. Popsit Fishing, two other channels. It helps the whole brand grow. I appreciate the support. Thanks for popping by. All right, guys, Mr. Popsit here, Greg Lynch, Durham, PA. We have a mystery bump, uh, so likely a cyst, but could be a dermatofibroma, 2.5 centimeters roughly, or two, just over, um, and it's got a kind of a purple little spot, which could be a scar tissue or a little area of inflammation. So we're going to be removing this today. Um, we'll do a little wedge cut there and uh, elliptical excision and see what we get out of here. If it's just scar tissue, no pop, but if there's a little cyst, there'll probably be a little pop with it. So we'll get them all prepped and ready. And He's ready. nice and anesthetized. We didn't do the before because they wanted to record. So um, I was like, for sure, we'll record it. <laughs> so he was already anesthetized, but you see that little purple bump there. We're going to do that small lips here. And we let him know to tell us if he feels any stinging at all, which he shouldn't. You can already feel some scar tissue here as I'm cutting, which could be from previous squeezing, but could be because we have a good dermatofibroma here. And I don't think I really have a good dermatofibroma video. So if it is that, it's a win. Something we haven't really covered. If it isn't, it's a cyst, which is also a win. <laughs> okay. Mystery bumps are always interesting because you never know what you're gonna get. It's like a box of chocolates. We kind of got him in on short notice because he's got sports and a small break. So we got a little break there. We'll get this out. He'll have some stitches there during that so he doesn't miss anything. Good dab there. No pain, just some tugging is all you're feeling? I don't feel anything at all. Good. It's the way it should be. Nice, healthy fat tissue underneath. And sometimes, you know, you know, young males will get a big pimple even, just a big nodular pimple, and they kind of squeeze on it, and that starts the process of a dermatofibroma forming, which is a nice... No pain there? Mm -mm. Good. Nice nugget of scar tissue forming. So you can see pretty good size there. So we'll bring that over here. See if my hunch was right or wrong. Yeah, that's the sound of a dermatofibroma. So you can see there, that is no cyst. It is very fibrous. They'll sometimes even be yellow at the bottom, you can see there. This is the rings of like a tree. So that's first year, second, just kidding. <laughs> but you can see that's very fibrous. When I cut this, if you listen, it's like, it's almost like cutting through like a really unripe fruit. Um, they're just very fibrous. And you will see this yellow connective tissue in there sometimes too. So it's interesting, you know, it kind of looked like a cyst from the top, but when I felt it, I was thinking dermatofibroma and it's always nice to have a confirmatory surgery. So we send that out just to make sure there is a, um, very, very rarely dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, which is a malignant form of dermatofibromas. So a lot of people are like, if it's scar tissue, why do you even remove that? And we do that because, you know, they can be painful. They do get bigger. And there is a slight possibility of a um, advancement to a type of cancer. This doesn't look like that. They really look abnormal. This one looks like a normal one. So um, that's it. We'll come back over here. Yeah, we always look in for little leakers here. I don't see any residual. Might be a little bit at the edge there. Oh, and one big nugget. That's just a little connective tissue, actually. That's good all the way around. No pain? Uh -uh. Good. Gonna be a little smoke, it's barbecue you. <laughs> I always ask about pain because 
obviously I don't want to hurt them, but scar tissue in particular doesn't dissipate lidocaine, lidocaine very well. So like normal soft tissue, it dissipates pretty well going through. With those, it can make it a little more difficult. That'll close right nicely. Okay, that's good. You don't have to be too close on the stitches. All right, so we're back for our deep sutures. Had to address a vasal vagal reaction, which is also very common. We see probably once a week. It's a stress reaction, whether it's, you know, seeing a needle or a lot of times our electrocautery. People don't like the smell of themselves being burned and I don't blame them. <laughs> and thanks to mom over there, she saw it. <laughs> he started getting pale. And I usually notice because they'll start clearing their throat because they start producing more saliva. And they'll be like, <clears throat> they'll start doing that a lot. And I ask them, like, I feel a little lightheaded. And that's all it takes. The way to treat that is to have them lay down and bring their knees up. Facial vagal reactions like you are in stress, the body peripheral uh, vasculature to send all the blood and when it does it pulls it from the vein uh, from the brain unfortunately and you start getting lightheaded if it goes long enough you'll fall right on your face <laughs> so it's not good nobody wants that it takes about three to six minutes you lay them down the blood goes right back to the brain and we're back in business you feeling a little better yeah good okay he sounds better <laughs> I did have a surgery many years ago. Gosh, it's probably eight or nine years ago on a 330 pound bodybuilder. Big guy, lots of muscle. And uh, I had a male medical assistant at the time named Chris. And he passed out on the table on us and it was just him and I there. And started rolling off the side and it took all of our string to drop everything to even hold him on the table. And then, um, we had somebody else come in, a third person, to help us get him back up right onto the table, and we flattened it out, and he did great. Sometimes it comes up quick, though. Is it always the guy? That... You know, it's funny. <laughs> a lot of times, and and you know what's even funnier is it's like the big guys, yeah. <laughs> the guys with all the muscle. You know what I mean? Like it, he was like the second or third guy that lifted weights quite a bit. I could tell. Pretty big guys, over two fifty, three hundred. Yeah. But I have had it happen to some women too, but I would say guys more often. <laughs> just get right up in there. You feeling comfortable? Yeah. Just need a couple more minutes and we'll be done. Did great. I actually have seen dermatofibromas get two to three times the size of this one. They can get quite big. I'll have you just bring the shoulder forward just a smidge. Like that's perfect. If you can hold that for just a minute, and then we'll be done. Well, the stitches in for two weeks, um, and get those out.
Very nice. This is actually a little um, just kind of scabbing there, clotting from our shots that we did earlier. So you can see we try to pull that nice tissuey version, very thin line on the shoulder there. That should heal great. We'll get those stitches out in two weeks. Okay, it's not altogether a loss, even though there wasn't a pop. We did learn about dermatofibromas. Um, what they look like down inside and how they can mimic the feel of a cyst because they can be a little nugget under there. And we also learned about the vasovagal reaction, a stress reaction where you can pass out. The other thing I didn't say yet is when people leave, I always tell them if they're in the hallway and they start kind of seeing white spots and feeling lightheaded, lean against the wall. If you pass out, you sit down. If you're standing and pass out and fall forward, you can knock all your front teeth out. So that's not something we want. <laughs> so, but once you lay them down, they get water. That usually doesn't happen, but great uh, little case. And we'll post that in a couple weeks. Thanks for popping by.